Fusion Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. In our next chapter, we're going to take a look at web roles. What can you do with them? How do you configure them? And we'll also explore the dev fabric and debugging in that dev fabric in Visual Studio. A web will host an IIS-based website or web service and supports both HTTP as well as HTTPS. As we mentioned in our last chapter, it's automatically load balanced by Azure. That is assuming that you have at least one instance, or I should say more than one instance, of your web role. We'll talk about that more in just a bit. They can be internally facing only, in other words, only used with inside of Azure and the components inside of Azure, but usually they're public facing. And not only do they run or host IIS-based applications, they actually run on IIS 7. Typically, we find they run as an ASP.NET site. When you take a look at a web role, or at least a web role project, it looks pretty much like your standard ASP.NET project with one additional file, and that is the web role CS file, at least assuming here that we're using C Sharp. That CS file serves as the kickoff point, if you will, for a web role application. Inside of that web role.cs file, we'll find two important methods, the on start method, which really is the kickoff method for a web role, and role environment changing method. Essentially, what should happen if something in the web role changes? Web roles and worker roles, any component inside of Azure, has a certain amount of dynamicism built in. In other words, certain parts of the configuration can be changed on the fly. When that happens, this method helps determine how that particular role should react. Once we have a web role built inside Visual Studio, we'll want to test it out. We'll do that through what is known as the dev fabric. Now remember, the fabric is our name for all the servers, the environment, the equipment that runs inside the cloud. But locally on your machines, we have something called the dev fabric, which is a mechanism to simulate what the actual fabric inside the cloud will do. It's essentially a 90% basis of what we'll find in the real fabric. In other words, about 90% of what we find in dev fabric is what we'd actually find inside the real fabric of the Azure cloud. There are some exceptions which we'll talk about here over the next few chapters. Locally, that is in the dev fabric, an SQL instance, either SQL Express or full SQL Server, is used to simulate storage. And that's probably one of the key differences in that 10% that's not the real fabric versus the dev fabric. That's one of the key differences. Inside of the Azure Cloud, storage is handled differently than it is in the dev fabric. In the dev fabric, storage, tables, queues, and blobs, as we mentioned in our first chapter, are actually handled by this SQL instance. And the dev fabric is the only way to debug applications, at least today. You can't debug in the cloud, so the only way to debug applications is through the dev fabric. Let's go ahead and take a look at building a small little hello world type of application in Visual Studio meant for the cloud. So allow me to switch to Visual Studio. And as a reminder, when you're running in Azure development, you want to start Visual Studio as an administrator so that dev fabric can start. So I've got Visual Studio here up on the screen. And this Visual Studio instance has the Azure SDK loaded into it. So let's begin by creating a new Windows Azure project. File, new, project. And if you've got the Azure SDK loaded in your system, you should find templates for cloud development. In this particular case, I'm going to build a small little vi uh, Visual C Sharp uh, cloud application. So you'll see cloud is one of the templates offered under Visual C Sharp. And we're going to build a Windows Azure cloud service. We'll just call that Welcome Cloud. Once you've requested the new cloud project to be built, the next thing you're confronted with is what roles do you want to have built into that project? In this particular case, I'm going to select that I want one new ASP.NET web role. 
you'll notice you have the option for different types of roles, both web and worker, and in some cases, even more specifically, different types of web or worker roles. For example, an ASP.NET versus an ASP.NET MVC web role. So I've just built a simple, or asked for a simple ASP.NET web role. Now I'm going to change the proposed name for that web role. Right now it's web role one. I'm going to change that to welcome cloud web role. And with that, my solution comes up with a couple of things. First of all, you'll notice the solution contains my welcome cloud web role. Again, a pretty standard ASP.NET application, but with one new file, and that is the webroll.cs. One other thing you'll notice is another one of the projects as part of my solution is the actual cloud application. And in the cloud application, we'll see a couple of files in there. We'll see a service configuration and a service definition file. More on those files coming up in this first chapter, in this uh, second chapter, in just a bit. Let's take a look then inside of the Welcome Cloud Web Role, that ASP.NET application. If you'll notice, it comes complete with a standard default ASPX page with complete code behind. The web config file has pretty standard in ASP.NET applications. And again, the webroll.cs. Let's go ahead and open up webroll.cs. And again, we see by default an on start and a role environment changing method. And again, it's the on start method that kind of kicks off our web role. And the role environment changing method is what allows the application React to configuration changes dynamically. At this point, I'm not going to make any changes in the web role CS file. We'll talk more about what happens in that file and some changes that we might want to make later on. For now, the only thing I'm going to do is build my little hello world application. I'm going to drop a label into my default ASPX page. Let's see, let's put some text in there. Hello, everyone. And we'll save that application. So I now have a fully functional Azure, Windows Azure cloud application with one web role. Let's go ahead and hit F5 to start the application off. Or let me just hit the uh, start debugging button here on their page. And what we'll notice is that at this point, Visual Studio will start or kick off the dev fabric. The dev fabric will show you some icons here in just a second to see it actually running. But the dev fabric is what again simulates the Windows Azure environment. Once the dev fabric is up and running, in this particular case, it launches a browser and starts my default ASPX page. So we've written our first web role and Windows Azure application. Okay, now let's return to our notes and continue our discussion about web roles. Now that we've seen one of the applications destined for the cloud running in our Visual Studio environment and the dev fabric, let's talk a little bit more about that dev fabric. Again, the dev fabric is about a 90% simulation of what we'd actually see running in the Windows Azure cloud. If we were to actually take a look while debugging our application that we just wrote, we would have seen a little icon, the dev fabric icon showing up in our system tray. And this icon allows us to see the fabric as it's running and to be able to shut it down. And I should mention not only see the fabric, but also development storage if we were using that. In fact, if we were open up Task Manager for Windows, we'd actually see four processes that run the dev fabric in our environment. And if we were to open up that dev fabric UI for each of the roles that we have running in our environment, in our Azure application, we'd be able to see that role listed as one of the roles running in our dev fabric, along with how many instances of that application are actually running. In this case, just showing the one and only instance of Hello Cloud running. And with each of those instances, we would be able to see a log, essentially a trace log, what's happening inside of that particular instance. The Dell Dev Storage UI allows us to see whether blob queue and table storage is up and running and the ability to stop and reset that particular storage. We'll see that there are more powerful storage tools available from third parties in, uh, in our exploration of the storage capabilities of Azure. 
In fact, Sarah Brada's Cloud Storage Studio is one of the favorites. This is not a free tool. It's about $60, but it's one of the favorite tools of many Azure developers today. There is a free exploration tool as well called Azure Storage Explorer, and you can find that out on the internet by searching for that particular title. One of the questions we might have is inside of our application, in one of our web or worker roles, is are we actually running in the fabric or not? And by fabric here we mean are we running in the actual cloud fabric or are we running in the dev fabric? For all intents and purposes, that question is the same. As compared to, are we not running in that fabric? Are we running in maybe a standard old IS, IS type of environment? We might want to ask this question because we might want to, in some cases, have our application running in a standard data center and in other cases running actually in the cloud. So how do we build our code? How do we conditionalize our code to be able to check for that? Well, there is one API built into the Windows Azure SDA SDK that allows us to determine that. We ask, role environment is available. If that is true, then you know you're running in the fabric. If not, you're not running in the fabric. You're potentially running in IIS or some other environment in your own data center. So debugging in the dev fabric and in Visual Studio is just like debugging any other type of .NET application, in this case an ASP.NET application. Simply set your breakpoint in your code, and when you're doing your debugging, you'll see the stop and be able to explore the application and the variables as you would normally. However, as mentioned, there is no debugging in the actual cloud, so all debugging has to be done in the dev fabric and in Visual Studio. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.